Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here at the Raptors Digest reacting to some Toronto Raptors news. Firstly, got a little new setup here. Riker's coming back soon, so had to dial it up a little bit as we enter the offseason. Obviously, there's been a lot of Raptors rumors and reports, players being talked about. And right now, there's a big question mark about what the Toronto Raptors are really going to do with their main guys. Whether it be Kyle Lowry, Siakam's been involved in trade discussions, and... The one common theme we've been hearing is this Toronto Raptors team is filled with guards. We've played this entire season rocking small ball, and we have a lot of talent in that backcourt position, whether it's obviously Lowry, who's currently a free agent, Fred Van Vliet, who we just signed last season, Gary Trent Jr., who we just brought in this midway through this year at the trade deadline, hoping to re-sign at the... De at the this this free agency is a restricted free agent. And then we have Malachi Flynn. We did just lose one in Jalen Harris, who unfortunately has been banned from the NBA. Didn't make an entire video on that, but Jalen Harris, obviously Raptors rookie. He's out of the picture now. And there's a lot of question marks because clearly the hole right now for this team, it's with that insurance pile on Aaron Baines. And, you know, will, will we be able to fill that center position? I don't know. But there's a lot of talk, a lot of reports involving guards so far this season. Maybe that means a big trade's coming. Maybe something else is going to happen. But one name that has specifically been rumored is Reggie Jackson. I'll pull up one of the little reports now we have from Evan Massey. And he's saying Reggie Jackson's obviously an intriguing free agent. The Clippers are the favorites to sign him, but I believe it's the Mavericks and the Toronto Raptors who have also expressed interest in signing this guard. And I know what a lot of people are thinking, especially people that followed us around uh, to Courtside Digest, who you've seen us talk about the LA Clippers and talk about this team, and they're a tough team to cheer for. But one of the intriguing storylines, this, this playoffs has been Reggie Jackson, who has emerged from a guy that was waived, cut by the Detroit Pistons, and now has been an absolute monster in this year's playoffs. His stats have been ridiculous. They've been amped up. I believe he was averaging single digits in points going into the playoffs, and now close to 18 points per game. And if you watch those games from the LA Clippers, they were timely shots, shots in the clutch, daggers that absolutely demoralized Utah Jazz players, Mavericks players, fans, everyone that was watching those games. And it was really surprising coming from Reggie Jackson, who obviously had a lot of expectations, was given a big contract when he was sent to Detroit. Him, Blake Griffin, and Andre Drummond were supposed to be a tandem to lead that Pistons team out of uh, mediocrity and at least into a mid-tier playoff team. And unfortunately for Detroit, they're currently getting the top pick now. They waived Reggie Jackson last offseason. They waived Blake Griffin. And he was picked up by the LA Clippers. And yes, he did have an okay sort of season for for the, the Clippers. You know, last year, he was all right in the playoffs. He showed that he could certainly be an NBA player, at least, still at this point. Maybe a decent backup guard, but not nearly the, the potential, the height that a lot of people sort of expected from him when he left OKC wanting to command his own team. All right, gotta get centered in this, this little one here. Still getting used to the new studio, but now, after this postseason, everyone's talking about the money that <laughs> Reggie Jackson has certainly earned himself after clutch playoff performance big game after big game and we've seen it a couple years back with Bismack Biombo in the Toronto Raptors a guy that's not necessarily a, a top tier NBA player they have a monster run in the playoffs and they get paid big time in the case of Biz he was paid 18 million dollars a year from the Orlando Magic and in this report from Evan Massey I put up the tweet but there's a full article being broken down he expects the Clippers to offer something around 10 to 12 million, and Reggie Jackson has expressed interest to return to the Clippers. Now, this is where the Toronto Raptors come in. I just talked about a bunch of the positives surrounding Reggie Jackson, why he's why he'd be a cool player, why he's a really nice story, but should the Toronto Raptors really go after this guy and pay him upwards of maybe $15 million per year if the Clippers are gonna offer him 10 to 12? In order to latch him away from LA, we'd have to give him probably 15 that would be my sort of expectation especially if he's not going to be a starting point guard whereas he would be in LA maybe LA has some other moves up their sleeve but Kyle Lowry for Reggie Jackson sign and trade we'll talk about that after but specifically with the fit of Reggie Jackson on this Toronto Raptors team firstly if we re-sign Kyle Lowry this is foolish this is utter silliness to bring him in you don't trade for or you don't sign give Reggie Jackson a bag if you're going to keep Fred VanVleet, Malachi Flynn and Kyle Lowry 
That's four point guards right there who are undersized. We're likely getting Suggs, too, who, yes, he can play off the ball, but really thrived at Gonzaga with the ball in his hands. He's only 6'4 himself. Gary Trent Jr. is a two, but still, you'd be feeding up, eating into his minutes, and he's going to be getting the bag this offseason as well. If you're keeping Kyle Lowry, I'm, I'm out on Reggie Jackson. No matter how cool of a story it is, I don't want to sign him. But... If you're losing Kyle Lowry, that opens a little position there. You've lost Jalen Harris at this point. Malachi Flynn is a question mark right now. Your point guard depth without making any moves. And assuming Suggs is a two, it's Fred Van Vliet, Malachi Flynn. And then you have uh, Gary Trent Jr. and Jalen Suggs there at the two guard position. We'll see who starts. We'll see how the lineups shake out. But those are your four real rotation guard pieces for this team. And maybe Paul Watson sneaks his name in there. I want to give him a little shout out. But... Reggie Jackson coming into that mix on a big contract. I don't really see it without other moves being made. Now, if <laughs> we've talked about a multitude of trade possibilities, if you let Malachi Flynn, you add him to a trade, or there's no way we're letting Gary Trent Jr. walk, or maybe we end up Mobley falling to us, Reggie Jackson's not a, a, di- a combo guard I would mind coming off the bench, and it's a decent price for him. Now, is there question marks about... Was this playoff performance just a, a flip in the pan or whatever, and he's going to go regress back to an average backup point guard once he gets paid the same way he did in Detroit? Or will this be a, a player that continues this rem- remarkable play going forward? That's that's the risk you take, but let's say we lose a Malachi Flynn, and even if we get a Suggs, and we lose Kyle Lowry, right? I don't mind this signing in those specific circumstances, but... I don't really know in which scenario that's going to happen. Maybe the Raptors trade up to three to draft Mobley, throwing Malachi in the fourth pick for uh, for Evan Mobley. That's that's just something I'm pulling off the top of my head right there. That's let me know in the comment section what you think of that. But if we're keeping our guys, I don't really think this makes sense. And there's a lot of people sort of talking about Reggie Jackson, so I want to address it. We've also been I've been setting up the studio, Rikers got climbing mountains, so. We, uh, we've been not putting out the videos, but I don't think this one has to go very long because unless something crazy, some trade occurs that is coming out of nowhere, coming out of left field, I think the Toronto Raptors should stay away from Reggie Jackson. But obviously, now Masai Jerry is, uh, we'll see if he's the one actually pulling the strings or it's Bobby Webster. A lot of stuff has been rumored and talked about by the Toronto Raptors this, this off season, a lot more than it usually seems leading into draft night and free agency. So who knows what will happen? Maybe there'll be a hole there. My take, my final take is that if we have a hole that backup point guard position, we lose a couple of our guards. Sure. Bring them in $10 million per year. You risk it just looking at the level he played at this off season or this postseason, and then see where you can go from there. You take risks on players, but we still have Malachi Flynn. I'd rather keep Malachi Flynn around, especially on his rookie contract. I don't want him eating into any minutes of Jalen Suggs, Fred Van Vliet, or Gary Trent Jr. So that's my take there. And actually, not the final point. Some people addressed uh, LA Clippers sign and trade, Kyle Lowry for Reggie Jackson. Stop that. I'm not even a, not even entertaining that possibility. I do not want to see Kyle Lowry on the LA Clippers. I, my eyes would bleed seeing Serge, Kyle, and Kawhi on that team. Next year, suiting up for LA and Steve Ballmer grabbing everyone's thighs as as he's celebrating as they win a championship. So don't send Kyle to LA. Reggie Jackson's not the return that you'd want for Kyle Lowry, and we'll still probably have Mal- Malachi Flynn at that point. So writing that one off, but let me know what you guys think. Would you guys want Reggie Jackson on this roster? Obviously an interesting player. We're, we're inching closer to draft time. The NBA Finals are starting up tonight, so... Fun stuff ahead. Subscribe to Raptors Digest. A lot of cool things incoming. Subscribe to Courtside Digest as well. All NBA coverage happening 24-7. But you guys are the best. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, all the cool stuff. I'm signing off. Cheers.